Hey everybody, today I have a 10 new D5 render tips and tricks for you. So let's get started. Tip number one, say you're working on a project and you've really dialed in the lighting, like you've got it all figured out and you want the settings to be carried over to another scene. So here I've got a nice, beautiful sunny day and I want it to go here because this looks, this looks kind of gloomy, right? All you have to do is grab the scene you really like, right click it, hit copy parameter, go to the destination, so basically the scene you're not happy with, and hit paste parameter. And it'll actually it'll bring over all your environment settings to this view. Just make sure you hit update scene, that way you don't erase it. Tip number two, in my opinion, is probably how I achieve photorealism in like the easiest way possible. So if you go over to environment, and say you're using an HDRI, typically you're driving all your sunlight from rotating the HDRI, which is good and bad, it's fine if it's like a bright sunny day HDRI, but if you switch to anything that's got clouds and you want to customize, you know, the actual look of it, it gets a little limiting because, you know, your lighting's being affected because you want your clouds in a certain area. This is where custom sun position is super important because now you can break the location of the sun from the HDRI. So now I can tweak the sun position without changing the rotation of my HDRI. So it's completely driven separately. If you want to go back, you just hit follow HDRI and it mimics it from before. So there's pros and cons to each method. I get so much more artistic control if I use custom. Tip number three, emissive lights. So you see these lights right now, they look off. And the problem with that is it's pretty dark in here. What you can do is you can actually drive emissiveness through the material. If you hit eyedropper on the material and you click emissive, it's basically faking that the lights are on. They will emit some light. You know, if I increase the intensity here, you know, you'll see that it is adding and contributing to the scene. But now when I come out here, it looks like the lights are on without me having to actually play some spotlights. That's a way to kind of fake that your lights are on. Tip number four. This was a fun one. So because of D5 2.9's terrain system, you now have the ability to paint different textures on top of your landscape material. So if I were to go over here to my ground, and let's say I grab gravel sand, gravel sand, and I start painting, you know, it looks cool that I've got this, but the interesting part is now scatter actually detects this as a different surface. So if I zoom out, now I can just target this area instead of my whole landscape, because this is how you crash your computer. This is how you just target a certain area. So now I can hit create, and if I want, I could just have this area be trees or something, right? So if I were to go here and grab this guy, this one area now has the trees. And this is all driven by the paint tool, right? So I could literally go back to my terrain, paint some more, and I would start getting more scatter area. Right now, you're not seeing anything generate because I haven't regenerated the scatter. So if I click this, now I'm gonna get the warning, hit regenerate, and now we'll see trees pop up here. So much easier to do this rather than to brush. Um, and this is fully dynamic, so I can actually go in, change like the size of things, I could change the distribution. So I can make this 10 or even less, and there you go. So that's an easy way to do that. And you can always replace the material too. So like if you don't like this weird gravel color I chose, you just go back. You click here and you hit replace and you can grab any other asset. So if I grabbed road surface, you know, just something random, the trees will remain, but now this is different. You can even tint it if you want. So super handy if you want to create complex landscapes um, without having to use the brush tool or manually place these. So on the same topic, say you've got all these different assets here, right? But for some reason, you've got an asset clipping into another asset. So right now this is no good, right? So I'll, I'll put this in even deeper. There's two ways of removing the trees. You could double click a tree and now I've detached it. So this is its own asset. So you see right here, this is its own asset. It's been removed from the scatter group. Okay. The other way is if you cull this out. So if I click my scatter and I go down here where it says effects and I click cull, and I click my house here and hit create, it will remove assets from spawning here. See that? So nothing is in here. You see that? But obviously, you know, there's going to be some clipping and I could 
reduce that with like lowering the density, but nothing will spawn in there. And that's the big difference. All right, tip number six. This is called make unique. So I've got two beautiful Porsches here, right? The problem is if I were to change the material of any of these, let's say I want these to be orange, they're gonna change in two different locations, which may or may not be ideal. Let's say I want this car to be different from this. Let's say I'm doing something and there's multiple cars, right? And they're racing, right? I click the asset, I right click, and then I hit make unique. Now watch what happens. When I change the color of this, it only affects this model. It doesn't go back. Although they're the same material name, it's not gonna go back and change it. So this is how you unlink models from kind of talking to each other when it comes to materials. This is really useful if you're doing design options and you don't want your materials to affect your previous option. All right, tip number seven, we're all guilty of this, layers. Okay. Layers are super important to just have your project be organized, especially if you're sharing a project. It really sucks when you open up someone else's file and everything's a mess. So there's an easy way to fix this. First, create a new layer for the object. Let's say trees, right? All you have to do now, instead of manually clicking the trees, just go here to a built-in filter, click nature, and now shift and hold. And now you can change the layer it's on. And then from here, you can just toggle things on and off. So those were part of that. These guys over here did not get picked up because they're actually models, right? So they're actually not nature models. Scatter is its own thing. So that's why this guy didn't turn off. To add scatter, all you would have to do is click it and change the trees or filter scatter. So that's how you would do that. All right, tip number eight, batch rendering. I've got all these beautiful views that I need rendered out and I want to go to sleep and I don't want to wait by my computer as they process. So if I click them, and I go all the way to the bottom and hold down shift. I have all of them selected. All I have to do now is go over to image mode and hit add to render queue. So watch this. Notice there's a little blue button, a little blue dot up here. If I click render queue, now I have 10 different renderings all in one spot that are ready to be batched out. So if I check mark all, I can choose to select or deselect. And then once I have them selected, I can actually overwrite the resolution and if I want channels or not. So if I want these to be 2K instead of these weird dimensions, I hit okay. Now they're all 2K renderings. I can even choose a location for them to be saved, a prefix, and I can close D5 automatically after they're done rendering. Then you just hit render and then go one by one and they'll fill up that folder. Super useful if you're doing a bunch of jobs. You can do the same thing with video. So if you wanna send over video and renderings, it could be all queued in the same container. All right, tip number nine caustics. You see these reflections of the water on the wall? Those are caustics. So caustics might come off a little unintuitive because what happens is you need to actually trigger this setting in the light and the material. So watch this. Every light bulb has this caustics button. If I uncheck it, it no longer works. If I check it, it works, but it's also in the material. This is something people often forget. So if I uncheck caustics here, I'm not gonna get caustics on the light. So you gotta remember, it's gotta exist in both locations, in the material and the light bulb. So I'll turn this on, go back to light bulb, and now I can control the intensity, which is basically like the specular highlight of the reflections, right? So make sure you go to your light bulb and your material. And my final tip is related to photography. Did you know that there's an actual built-in rule of third composition grid, right in D5? That's under display and this button here. Now what's nice about this is now you can move your camera around and you want to make sure you have your horizontal and your vertical kind of locked onto something interesting. This is a great way for beginners to kind of get their shot in like a nice, well-composed angle. So that's what that's for. The other thing that's really useful when you're setting up your views is picture in picture mode. And I know I'm in my camera because it says tip number 10 right here, right? But did you know if you uncheck this, activate, you get a little picture in picture view. So as I move the camera around, this sits here. So if I hit pin right here, this is going to sit in my bottom right corner. Now, why is this important? Because I can actually move around in the editor, click and select things and move, and my viewport stays right there. So now I actually don't have to be in there while I'm placing objects. This makes it much easier to place things so you can see if they're clipping something or they need to be moved around to hide something. Super useful. Hope you enjoyed those tips. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, leave a like, and hope you subscribe.
See you next time.